Hello, and welcome to The Corporate Casket, a semi-weekly series where bad businesses go to die. We will discuss any and everything from bad charities, terrible CEOs, and people that have a lot to hide. I'm the Illuminati, and today I'm going to be talking about a type of company that I'm sure most of you are aware of, considering how quickly these types of businesses seem to just multiply. Seriously, the only reason I've actually been dreading discussing this is because I know I'm just going to get a ton of ads for them after the research process and visiting their websites. I'm talking about shady dropship companies. And now that I'm thinking about it, some of these may not even be in existence by the time this episode goes live, because they just pop up and crash so quickly but we're gonna be talking about those places that advertise free jewelry and all you have to do is pay shipping, like that special brand of bullshit. So let's just get into this and talk about what is a dropship company and how does this type of business actually operate and profit? Let's get into it. Just like any other kind of business really, well, except for MLMs, there's a few good ones out there mixed in with the bad ones that can ruin the reputation of the others. Now, not all dropship companies are terrible by default, and there's a way it can be done correctly. Even the idea of dropshipping itself is a little bit questionable for many though. So what is dropshipping exactly? Well, according to Big Commerce, it's an order fulfillment method that does not require a business to keep products in stock. Instead, the store sells a product and passes on the sales order to a third-party supplier, who then ships the order to the customer. Dropshipping doesn't require a brick and mortar store, and it's basically like adding in a middleman. If I sold like my soap to you guys, but I wasn't the one making it, I didn't have any products in stock or anything, then it wasn't really my shop. I just would have a third party person sending soap to you that they made and I just kind of branded it as my soap. So that would be a form of drop shipping. Now, obviously that's not the case. I'm going to be making my own soap and candles because I want to control exactly what's in it, how I make it, how they're scented, that sort of thing. But if I didn't do that and instead had someone else produce it for me and I just sold it, that's kind of what drop shipping is. With drop shipping, I couldn't really have control over product quality. And sometimes people just don't care about that. Hence why these shops are so popular. But personally, I'd be putting my name on the line and yet the quality, storage, inventory management and shipping of said product would be entirely up to somebody else and out of my control. Some articles call it a get rich quick scheme, while others say those promoting drop shipping earn very little since most of the money from every sale goes to the supplier and what marketers do earn barely covers their office hours. We'll see it talked about a bit more, but when someone creates their drop ship website, they're typically using a cheaper listing from sites like AliExpress or Shopify, usually shipped from China that they in turn upsell to customers. Wired says successful drop shippers often solve so-called pain points, Perhaps you like to go running with your dog, but find holding the lead a chore. A drop shipper finds a hands-free running leash on AliExpress, then targets it via Facebook to dog loving runners. They'll create a video showcasing its benefits, videos outperform imagery, and then haunt you with that video until you give in and purchase the item. At this point, you'll wait up to a month for delivery. Lengthy order processing times are a drop shipping tell because the item is being shipped from China. But as I've mentioned, there's also this offer of it's free just pay shipping or free plus shipping that many drop shippers advertise. Do Drop Shipping, a site that advertises drop shippers on how to actually run their business, explains that not only does this add appeal, but the free shipping plus model only works well with smaller items like jewelry and watches, for example. Since those items cost just a couple dollars to ship, these sites advertise drop shippers to charge 10 or $15 for shipping. That way the item still appears free, but it's actually covered in the shipping cost. One site, Enchanted Forest, even claimed their moon clip was free, but when I went to checkout, shipping alone would have cost me $60 for the supposed free item. So that's a fucking joke. The AliExpress version isn't even $2, by the way. Do drop articles teach drop shippers how to set up these so-called businesses on Shopify too. And some of the profit margins these kinds of articles advertise seem way too generous to be real. They make it sound like drop shipping is just sitting at home on your couch waiting for people to buy cheap products from your website and then the supplier does all the work. But there's a ton of issues that come with drop shipping, especially this free plus shipping mentality. So let's start there with these so-called free products. Quality control in drop shipping is really poor to no one's surprise, I'm sure. But the argument could be made that you get what you pay for. And if you buy a free watch, then don't expect a good watch. Seller Deck writes, It's mad, surely. What can possibly be to gain from giving stuff away? Well, if you've not worked out so far, it's largely a scam. Firstly, the product you're buying, if that's even if you receive anything, probably isn't worth as much as it's made out to. The item, whether it be a watch or jewelry or a t-shirt is probably made in China for pennies. You're then paying inflated shipping costs, usually around $9.99 or more for an item not worth that. 
And because of how these products are produced, they're not environmentally friendly either. Ironically, dropship suppliers are so aware of this that they're now trying to promote green dropshipping, which does like the bare minimum to be considered green and just takes a step out of the shipping process. Like, yeah, I guess I'm saving the environment now because these cheap goods traveled a few less miles than they were shipped overseas, like whoop de fucking do It's pretty disappointing to see being eco-friendly as a niche and a cash grab, but I'm not surprised dropship companies would promote this either. These articles aren't saying go green because it's good for the environment and a responsible thing to do. They're saying, hey, call yourself green because you'll get more customers that way. Even though a lot of these products seem far too good to be true, people absolutely still fall for them. Some customers say they reason that smaller online retailers may try to deplete their stock of cheap clothing, even though once you actually receive the product, it's nothing like the pictures would have you believe. Popular YouTubers like Sophia Nygaard and smaller YouTubers like Call Me Liz make dedicated videos to buying cheap clothing from sites like Wish and other sites that dropshippers use. Other YouTubers like Judy, as well as Millie T, showed results on one of their hauls, which were mixed to say the least. It's just such a variety in quality, which yeah, I mean, you get what you pay for, but I guess I'd rather pay for a higher quality top that's gonna last me a while than a shirt that'll fall apart after a few wears, if it even lasts that. And with how horrible the clothing industry is for the environment and how poorly they treat their workers, again, I find it pretty laughable this dropshipping industry can call themselves green. Overall, I think How To Geek sums this section up quite nicely. Dropshipping in of itself isn't a scam, but scammers are using dropshipping. Unlike the easily spotted advertisements offering fake Ray-Bans, this ad claims the product comes from an independent boutique. If you click on it, you'll see a website that looks professional. There might even be a backstory or photo of the design studio where the product was made. It'll also likely come with an SSL certificate to further suggest legitimacy. So you type your credit card details and wait, and wait. Eventually a package will land on your doorstep, except instead of coming from a Los Angeles fashion house, it came straight from China. Disappointment quickly sets in when you realize the product doesn't quite meet your expectations. The material might be all wrong or the stitching might be low quality. Rather than something that looks like it came straight off the catwalk, you've got something that could have been fished out of a Goodwill bargain bin. Stories like this are far too common in the online selling world. You could even argue it's an inevitable part of the business model. Sellers rarely, if ever, quality check their wares. Neither they nor their customers have any idea what the product really is like. So is every cheap watch, piece of jewelry, or article of clothing you get from Shopify or AliExpress or eBay bound to be a scam? Well, not necessarily, but it is a gamble. Now, before we continue on to talk about specific YouTubers who have pushed drop shipping or worked with drop shipping, let's just take a quick moment to thank today's sponsors. All right, guys, the summer is here. I still can't cook, but I am trying very, very hard. And that's a little bit easier thanks to today's sponsor, HelloFresh. And if I'm actually gonna be a little bit honest here, I think I'm actually slowly becoming more comfortable in the kitchen. Like I start to take some of the HelloFresh recipes and I start to kind of tweak them a little bit myself. So I'm just kind of like, am I getting like good at this? But anyway, I'm getting a little too far ahead of myself. If you don't know what HelloFresh is, HelloFresh is a meal prep delivery service. All you do is you go into their app, you select what kind of meals you want. They deliver it into the box with all the ingredients and you cook it yourself and most of the meals are ready in 30 minutes or less. And they will literally throw everything at you from the firecracker meatballs that I cannot get enough of to like buttered chicken to, uh, God, I don't even know. I think there was like zucchini boats the other night and they were actually really good. But you can pick your poison every single week inside the app. There's like 50 things to choose from. You pick if you want sandwiches, you know, something quick to eat, something that takes a little more time, your proteins, like you pick it and it gets shipped right to you very quickly too. So if you wanna get started today, make sure to go to hellofresh.com slash casket14 and use code casket14 for up to 14 free meals plus free shipping. Again, make sure to go to hellofresh.com slash casket14 and use code casket14 for up to 14 free meals, including free shipping. This episode is also sponsored by Purple Mattress. Now the approved cool pillow by Casper the Friendly Floof. And that's right, I said it, Casper steals my pillow. I think you guys know it, it's become more severe. Colorado's gotten a little bit hot for some unknown reason and and, uh, and well, he needs to stay cool. And his response is cool and comfy, steal mom's pillows. But how does purple keep everything nice and cool? Well, that's because purple mattresses have the grid. It's a unique ventilated design that allows air to flow through and help you sleep cool. And it feels like even when it's a thousand degrees outside, you will be nice, cool, and supported. And unlike memory foam, which remembers everything, the grid bounces back as you move and shift. So you never get that I'm stuck feeling that you do with memory foam. Purple is comfort reinvented. So right now you'll get 10% 
20% off any order of $200 or more. Make sure to go to purple.com slash casket and use promo code casket. That's purple.com slash casket. Use promo code casket for 10% off any order of $200 or more. Purple.com slash casket, promo code casket. Terms apply. Now, another massive issue I have with drop shipping, and one of the reasons I even wanted to talk about this in the first place, is the amount of YouTubers that push drop shipping as if it's a way to get rich. Please know that I'm not trying to go after or target any single person that I'm speaking of here. I'm just giving my thoughts on the business, and by extension, these sellers that put themselves out here publicly on the YouTube platform. In July, 2020, a YouTuber named Bia Heza said that it's not too late to start a dropshipping business and apparently proved this by creating a successful Shopify dropshipping business from the ground up for a challenge video. And that's great, but I mean, if he's an experienced seller, then I kind of get the feeling it's not starting from the ground up or at a beginner level. He even says he's been testing shipping times from AliExpress for months. So there's clearly at least some research that goes into starting a business that a beginner may not understand or even think about. As for a product, he picks a lash extension mascara with fibers in it. And then wait for it, he uses a royalty-free image to make a website, cherry picks reviews from AliExpress for his website and admits to editing the before and after photos. So clearly there's a few problems with this one. One, it feels extremely misleading. He picked a random image of a woman with her makeup beautifully done, not someone actually wearing the mascara he advertises. And to edit the images, that's obviously misleading consumers. Plus, once you factor in the product cost and marketing cost, it turns out his profit was way less than $200. So it's not even as effective as these people make it sound. I'm not saying it's impossible, and I'm not saying that dropshipping is inherently horrible and should never be done, but not once did this person explain that they researched the product he chose. But hey, this is only one video, right? Well, researching products doesn't seem like a priority for dropshippers. Wholesale Ted explains that when you start dropshipping, you make a website, play on people's emotions so they want your product, and then they buy it. Afterwards, Wholesale Ted is buying the same product from AliExpress and sending it off because as we said, it's not their product. But they insist this isn't a scam and use the two coffee shops by her apartment as an example. She says that she ordered two identical drinks and their prices were different. So therefore charging more for a product doesn't make it a scam. But her reasoning is a bit bizarre. Those two coffee shops are different from her website in AliExpress. First of all, those coffee shops may use different ingredients. They may offer different wages for their workers. Their rent is probably different. A gas station coffee is cheaper than a cafe for some obvious reasons. But Wholesale Ted says she reserves the right to decide what her product costs, as well as the example of Freaky Pet that she uses. But it's not her product or theirs. She has absolutely no say in how it's manufactured or designed. Pricing is subjective, I completely agree on that. And I don't even know I'd go so far as to call dropshipping a scam, but it's undoubtedly questionable when these middlemen don't even know a thing about what they're selling other than it comes from China and it makes them money. Another YouTuber, Sarah Finance, says she promises to reveal everything from A to Z about starting a Shopify dropshipping business in the first week. First, as expected, she has to choose a product. Sarah says she wants a product that is in high demand, has a wow factor, and isn't easily found in Walmart. The products she selects are soap sheets and uses Sprocket instead of AliExpress, where the soap sheets only cost just over $2. She found an advertiser on TikTok and off she goes. But wait, absolutely no research was done on the product itself. None, zero. This is supposed to be everything from A to Z, right? If these little soap sheets are being used on people's skin, shouldn't she want to know what's in them and who's distributing them? What are they made with? She just picked the cheapest option on Sprocket and went from there like, are you kidding me? Now, I'm not saying these soap sheets that she chose are horrible for you. They don't seem to be at a glance, but she didn't even give them a glance in the first place. She's marketing this to people. Wouldn't anyone pitching a product care about what they're putting their name on? It's just so disheartening to see. I'd really love to believe that she does her research on every product she sells, but even that's behind the scenes and Sarah isn't showing us that. I will admit her profit margin was 40%, which is better than what I expected, but she still only made $80 factoring in for marketing expenses. And again, I'm not trying to target Sarah or any of these other YouTubers. I don't think they're malicious, but perhaps a bit ignorant. Without trying to turn this into any kind of self-promotion here, I have to research every single product that goes into my own like candles that I'm working on. If my candles are going to be in a jar and they're gonna be lit, they need to be good for you. And I want them to be good for you. And I am tracking down my supply chain from A to Z to be as ethically sourced as possible because that's important to me, the integrity behind the product. 
So even the vessels that I'm choosing the candles to go in are made from recycled glass. And even when I'm shipping, I'm offsetting costs by figuring out a way to do like plastic recycling programs and work with tree planting programs and stuff like that to help the environment with every purchase. And that's all part of the true A to Z process of opening up an actual store when you give a damn about it. It matters what's in them, what they're gonna do, when the person uses the products, what they look like when they're shipped, what happens when they've been shipped and having total quality control. And that's something that's extremely important to me and something that for them, they clearly don't care about. I care who my distributors are. Like if I was a clothing person, I would care about the clothing manufacturer and the quality and how they're treating their employees. But this is like insane that they just don't care. They're just like pick cheap, don't care about what it does, who it hurts or anything. But again, I got a little emotional. So it's obviously something that I do care about and to see people so blatantly not give a shit and then make hundreds or thousands of videos just like this, like this can be extremely hurtful. It's not me trying to say that their mindset is wrong and they shouldn't run a business, but it's something that I personally take issue with and I feel that it's worth mentioning, but do what you want with this overall info, I guess. Now, the last issue that I have with dropship companies is the community that's built up around them. It reminds me of a lesser version of the MLM community. Many YouTubers and dropshipping companies alike will say that this is your own business or use language about how to start a business and how to start an online boutique. And I don't 100% disagree. In MLMs, you can't change the products. You have no say in your profit margin or what you charge and the money you make from sales doesn't even go directly into your pocket. So dropshipping is kind of like a step up closer towards your own business than an MLM, but it's not your own product, which is still arguably the most important aspect to any business. I'm not furious over this, and I'm not about to go shouting about how this is a scam for all to hear, but again, to me, this falls into a very frustrating gray area. Many dropshippers will also use clickbait titles like how I travel first class, how I make thousands of dollars, how I earned $1,000 in a week, or a $50,000 challenge. I mean, that example I used with Sarah earlier, she said she would hopefully earn $10,000 with her first week of sales from those soap sheets. But remember what the actual profit was? $80. She said at the end that it was still a fantastic profit margin, but the numbers these dropship videos advertise, it, it just reminds me of MLM numbers and how Huns will claim that they could make thousands of dollars in a week from their pyramid schemes. And in fact, they either barely break even or lose money. The fact is 90% of people or more fail with dropshipping. Plenty of dropship experts say it's because those diving in don't understand the risks involved. But in reality, a lot of users online admit it's mostly luck. It can be lucrative, but choosing the right product at the right time and finding the right people in the right moment, that's not something that can be taught or quantified in a market that's always changing. Sarah thought her soap sheets would sell really well, but they didn't. And the mascara did much better. As that article from How To Geek explains, the problem is that these days dropshipping is often used as a part of an online get rich quick scheme. All you need is a website and some social media advertising and you can sell people products from your online store. You don't have to keep anything in stock or make anything because someone else manufactures, stores, and ships the actual product. Scammy online merchants use sites that are designed to be quick to launch and cheap to operate. They often steal or repurpose images and text from third-party websites. They also use existing platforms to quickly launch new storefronts. Shopify is a particular favorite. Products are also routinely sourced from AliExpress, which is often dubbed the eBay of China. They go even further into this problematic nature of dropshipping and say, one reason scammy online businesses are so prolific is they often consist of pre-existing parts that are quickly brought together. Operators can hastily bundle together a Shopify page with a cheap advertising campaign and they're all set. They don't have to build a new website from scratch. This also makes them impervious to the negative word of mouth of traditional business would face. Once they start accruing negative reviews, they quietly move to another website. If you've had a great experience as a consumer or seller with a dropship company, then that's fantastic. And I'm not even trying to say that your experience is unusual. I'm not sure what the percentage of bad experiences with these kinds of companies would be or how that could even be calculated in the first place. But my point is that the attitude, the get rich quick mindset and anyone can make this easy money attitude is disconcerting. When Wholesale Ted addresses a lot of commenters concerns, the whole time it's very defensive and sarcastic. And hey, I've gotten irritated at a few comments before, and there's been some Hunbots that have taken to my comment section to tell me how wrong I am. But I would never dedicate portions of my video to sarcastically reading those comments and calling them ignorant, unless it's a flat earther. However, 
Wholesale Ted and other YouTube channels act like anyone who comments saying dropshipping is saturated or the market is too difficult to break into is just lying. When in actuality, these are real concerns people have about starting a business and some YouTubers just seem to dismiss them. Another article, this one from Inventory Source says, like any industry, any company that promises big money quickly is probably not legitimate. Beware of any company, dropship or not, that tells you profits will come with little work involved. The scams and middleman programs make big promises to hook you in and pay their upfront fee or monthly cost, or often pay their expert coaching, all while showing shiny pictures of iPads or Xboxes. Dropshipping is a great way to make money, and we have been helping thousands of users get started or expand for the past 10 years, but you will have to subscribe to the age old tradition of hard work to grow your business. Even when you find wholesalers in a supplier directory like inventory sources where they have been vetted, you still need to work marketing your site and developing your product listings to generate your initial traffic and optimize sales conversions. Dropshipping is a fulfillment model, not a business model. Just because anyone can do it doesn't mean that everyone will be successful with it. Dropship products often have thin margins and high competition. So unless you are able to build a business and repeatable customer acquisition processes, the model may not be profitable to you. By starting your own business, you will need to build a unique value proposition to the market. There are many pure dropshippers that are profitable and successful, not because of the promises the middleman programs make, but because they did their research to build a brand and establish unique and competitive supplier relationships. The promises these YouTubers and other dropshippers make aren't helpful. They come across as really scammy, at least to me anyway. I'm not saying I didn't find any useful advice in any of the videos I mentioned, but when all the research is behind the scenes, I find it to be more hurtful than helpful. It's giving people the preconceived notion that dropshipping is easy when that's not the case. If you find a fantastic dropship deal, then by all means, you do you. I don't think these dropship sites are quite as shady as plenty of other companies I've discussed, but they're not exactly my cup of tea if you couldn't tell. Former dropship sellers have spoken out as well, saying that the customer gets a shit experience with dropship sites. Wired also interviewed Mike Vestal and wrote, Vestal no longer sells courses for how to start dropshipping and is evasive when I ask him about it. The thing that I didn't like about dealing with this specific audience and why I don't sell any courses and why I'd work with existing entrepreneurs is that it's coming from a frame of scarcity and they want to succeed, but they don't want to grow into the person that would deserve it. They wanted immediate results and I didn't resonate with that, he says. He ends the interview shortly afterwards. Later, he texts asking if I know how he can get verified on Instagram. Francisco J. Sanchez Velva, a lecturer at CES Cardinal Cisneros in Madrid, says that dropshipping is full of drawbacks. It's typically hard to get good SEO positioning on Google if your main marketing channel is through Facebook. Margins are too narrow for comfort and high rates of product returns make it tough to make money. As dropshipping is seen to be less profitable, the knives come out. Watch out for the other dropshippers who'll steal your product, copy your video, or clone your store. This is an entirely separate aspect to dropshipping that I hadn't initially even considered. And it definitely wasn't talked about in those promo sounding YouTube videos I mentioned. It's so, so easy to copy someone else in this dropshipping world. After all, when it's not your product, you don't own the rights to sell it. The more I read about these companies, the more difficult it sounds to be successful and the less ethical it seems. Some dropshippers are shuttering their stores and shipping out. Loudon is one of them. Despite the fact that he's earned executive level pay while wearing board shorts, he wants to leave dropshipping behind. He's aware that even the most successful dropshipping store will eventually run out of steam. When the cost of Facebook advertising increases beyond your marketing spread, you're done. At the end of this year, we're probably done with dropshipping, he says. I want to build brands, actual ones that provide value to people. I'm reminded of a comment one of the statue men made amid the ice baths and steam rooms of Ammo Spa. I'd asked him if he was a dropshipper and he'd laughed and said he wasn't anymore. I'm doing something ethical. Meanwhile, kids keep washing up in Kangoo with baggage tags on their backpacks and dollar signs in their eyes, dreaming of making it big. They're prospecting for gold amongst the melon ballers and avocado slicers of AliExpress, throwing junk at the internet and hoping some of it sticks. But with all of that being said, that's where I'm going to end today's episode of The Corporate Casket. Overall, I've still got many mixed feelings about this whole topic. Though this may not be quite as toxic as MLMs, it doesn't seem all that far off either. It's one of those things that really rubs me the wrong way, even if I can't 100% put my finger on the problem. My biggest issues with them are tied between dropshippers not properly researching what they're selling, a lack of quality control, and the attitude pushed on people not sure if they should enter the business. So the next time you're advertised something on Facebook or Instagram that looks a little too good to be true, a little too cheap, a little too cutesy, a little too perfect, 
perhaps consider it might be a dropshipper in disguise. But again, that is where I'm gonna end today's episode. A little shorter, a little sweeter, a little bit more questions perhaps, but I still think it was an interesting topic to take a look at nonetheless. If you liked it, make sure that you are liking, following, and subscribing so that you can stay up to date with all the latest episodes. And if you wanna connect with me outside of these episodes, make sure you're clicking my Linktree link so that you can connect with me on my Twitch, social media, let's see, Twitter, Instagram, Discord server, all of those good things. Thank you all so much for sticking around for today's episode. I hope you have a great weekend and I'll see you on Monday. Bye.